baseball in Alberta. And in baseball, you always have your glove. You, you, you feel, I was an infielder, you feel from down to up. And I can never figure out why goalies have their glove up here and going down. And I see so many shots going under their glove. But to me, it seems logical that you would have your glove down and then up. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, so that's a, that was a Finnish um, revolution within the game. Um, and it was a certain gentleman, if you, if you Google, um, uh, Finland ice hockey goaltending and why they're so strong, it's like one person that played yeah, said TPS, I think. Yeah. And so anyways, he started that and he simply did it for an angles purpose. So if you think about where they could potentially score and that was the biggest area that they could score and going down your pad could get there too, if you're making the save down. Uh, but now the, let me just move this. So also another thing with goalies is that whatever their glove positioning is, it doesn't matter as long as it doesn't overlap where their body is. So if you want your hand here, you don't want it here, but you want it here or here, but you just don't want it overlapping their body. So you don't want it to be here. Um, but the big thing now with um, your, uh, passive stance so when the puck is out further is to have kind of your thumbs up and you're just kind of ready in this position so you're kind of tracking and your your hands are out but in a comfortable position so that you're not straining your muscles like you want it to be a relaxed comfortable like in baseball you know where you're just kind of ready in that ready position ready to make the play um, so that's kind of where goaltending has morphed to uh, but some goalies will just even feel more comfortable like this. I mean, that just is kind of a comfortable hand position too, um, versus this. Um, so yeah, if goals are going in, in that position, then they're likely not doing the movement, right. Or they're not covering it the way that they would have. Um, but I can remember when it came in, the Finnish goaltenders came in with these giant pads that looked massive to us because they're so big, so much bigger. It's the way that they all have them now. They were all pads, this little tiny goalie, she was all pads, and she just had her glove up like this, Tula Pukuti, I don't know if you remember that name. Um, and we're like, why is she standing like that? It looks so awkward. Uh, but she did it masterfully, and um, I think it has really kind of revolutionized. But no matter what goalie it is, whenever you go down the butterfly, your hands go down. So it's more what you're trying to cover for the player um, and what you're – you have to know too what you're leading the player with. What are you giving the player? Where are the openings on your body? And part of that is a mental game. It's a cat and mouse game um, to know, you know, potentially where they're shooting too. Sammy, just terrific stuff. Uh, <laughs> this is this may be the lo most loaded. <laughs> and it's very I very basic goaltending right now, but yeah, we can do a much but deeper. I, I think there's. It, it's going to bode well moving forward. I think we have to have a special goalie one and uh, really focus on goalie and, and send it out there to have these discussions with you presenting again. I do want to relate a story coaching with Tom. And I was an assistant in the final game of the year. We were maybe going to be in the playoffs and maybe not. But he had one goalie that was starting back to back. And I'm conscious of the goalie that doesn't play, as you know. And uh, after the second period, um, just thinking about what to say in the dressing room, I kept the second goalie and I asked her what she thought. And what she told me was like mind boggling. I said, would, would you mind saying that in the room to the team? And uh, when Tom did his... Uh, between period talk, and then he uh, turned it over to me. I asked her to to give her thoughts to the team, and it was bang on. It was uh, it wasn't technical. It was about how we play best and who we are, and the identity. And she didn't use the word identity, but she expressed it from her heart and soul. And she was a part of the team and felt that way. And the message she delivered, uh, we ended up beating the first place team. We never made the playoffs on the road on their 
celebrating graduation day at Nate. And uh, I feel that that little conversation allowed us to get into overtime with them. But I just wanted to share that. Uh, well, role- well I t- uh, three things that came out of that. One is uh, Kristen Campbell took the course with me, who is the third goalie on Team Canada this time. And um, Team Canada, before every game, had somebody give the pregame talk, a player. And it was before they did their warm up. So not like when the coaches were coming in, but before they did the warm up in the dressing room. And then at the Olympics, they voted on the top five performers for pregame speeches. And so Kristen Campbell was voted one of the best at it and did it at the Olympics. And she would get into song and dance and she would, um, you know, uh, tell each person what they were really great at. And it just, I loved it because it uh, gave her a sense of purpose too for the the Olympics and uh, she felt a part of the team and um, just a a great sort of addition you can do for backup goalies. Also, another thing is that uh, within the language, we no longer call them backup goalies, which I did not know. We actually named our dog backup. (laughs) Our second dog is named backup because she's the backup dog. Um, Our first dog is Sochi. So uh, they are now referred to as non-starters. They're not backups. And I like that language. That's that's a good language. And the the real push is to have your non-starters play and play forward and play defense. And especially at the younger levels. And they said, you know, even up to the age of like 12, 13, um, have your non-starters out there doing the other stuff and uh, not only becoming better athletes, A, um, but also seeing the game from a different perspective, learning how to shoot on goaltenders. And um, so that can't always be done, but certainly at the house league levels and maybe even at the A and AA levels can be done. Um, So I found that really interesting too. And I, you know, I had that luxury simply because we had um, shinny hockey in Winnipeg at every street corner that I could go out and play. And I do think that that really did translate into my goaltending later on. And um, now in the women's rec leagues, I can tear it up. (laughs) I don't really, I'm terrible, but I, um, you seeing it from a different perspective, I think is really important too. And um, so I I really liked that because I get, I'm very cognizant at the young age. um, The kids are sitting on a bench for an entire game as a goalie. And that's a, it's not that fun, but also B, athletically I mean you're just missing out on two or an hour of activity for the child so um I like that push to go in that direction and that comes from the top from Hockey Canada so that's good uh, I just want to one... say oh sorry. go ahead Tom I was just going to say something about that particular goal yeah go ahead she, she's going to play with us this afternoon and <laughs> what happened is she wasn't very she had never been coached because I took over the team at winter semester and she was lost in her net all the time she'd never been coached but and she catches with the right hand which is but uh, mel coached her and she was all star the last season she played amazing but then after covid because we weren't playing she went to sweden so the last season we had you know she was playing in sweden and not for us which was a huge difference and we did, like that game, we beat Nate and we tied the team ahead of us. But the first break, tiebreaker was regulation wins. And that was the only tiebreaker, goals for and against, against each other, everything we won. But it was regulation wins, so we didn't get in the playoffs there. But. So now she's back with you guys? Yeah, she's going to play this year. I recruited her. Oh, nice. Yeah, she's going to play. And we, I've just That's rented awesome. one ice time every week to skate and she's going to come out today. Nice. Um, the other um, movement that I also shared with the group, uh, it being uh, Pride Week and inclusivity, is um, that to get rid of the word, word female in hockey um, and to use women. In-